as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. I greet you all, viewers, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once more, I am privileged to have this opportunity to be able to minister to you what the Holy Spirit has placed in my heart. My name is Trufosa Okumu, and I minister with Crisco New Life, House of Prayer, located at Kayole Komarok Junction. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this hour for the privilege to be able to share the word together with the viewers. Pray, O oh Lord, for your divine revelation and for insight into your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Those who missed we have been speaking on instruments of grace and we highlighted the word of God as one great instrument of grace. This day, I want to speak to us concerning prayer as an instrument of grace. I'm speaking from Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 to 13. After this manner, therefore pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The major element of our time alone with God is prayer. I said prayer, viewers and listeners, is the instrument of grace provided for. Mostly we pray as we read the Bible. The nature of prayer may vary depending on what we are reading. Sometimes we may be led to pray deeper due to the manner at which one can understand the text. At other times it might be prayer of thanksgiving or even over confession of some revealed sin in our lives. or for God's enabling power to deal with that sin that has been exposed. Even at times of prayer, of appropriating to some promises in that text, or even cry for the faith to be increased in us in order to believe the text of the promise. Whatever the appropriate response could be, all this results of prayer are great conduits of grace. Romans chapter 1 verse 11 says, For I long to see you that I might impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established. Another version, this, there are different versions. But the word is the same. Like the Bible basic English BBE version says, I have a strong desire to see you, to give you some grace of spirit so that you may be strong. 
Paul was anxious to lay hands on these believers to impart and share gifts in order to continue to be strengthened and establish them. In other texts, he would explain this further, that when gifts of the Holy Spirit operate within the church, they produce exhortation, encouragement, and comfort. Similarly, when used privately, they edify the believer. During prayer, gifts are very much profitable. Besides praying, as we read the Bible, we need a dedicated time for prayer. The Bible is full of this subject on prayer. And even books have been written on prayer. Therefore, it is beyond my scope of my message to address prayer as a subject. I will not address prayer as a subject. But I'm focusing on the prayer pertinent to our time with God. And I'm looking at prayer as an instrument of grace for our spiritual transformation. Actually, this time with God does not focus on us, but on God's will and glory. Let us look at the reference scripture. This prayer easily divides into two parts. The first block focuses on God, 9 to 10. We can read again. After this manner, therefore, pray ye our Father, which out in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It focuses on God. It's important always to have it so that we are able to understand what was the mind of God in giving Christ this prayer for us. And the latter focuses on our needs. Both the temporary and the spiritual needs are focused. We will read verse 11 to 13. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thee, thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The fact that Jesus put, puts God's glory and God's will before our needs should be telling us something. Check out that prayer again. This prayer seems so religious that we overlook checking on it again and again and finding how it helps us to direct our prayer the right way. If we want our time with God to be in fact a time with God, we should put his glory first and his will above our needs. But let us examine our quiet time prayers. We will discover that our prayers mostly lie in the second part of our Lord's prayer. In fact, if according to us, we have not relied on the second part of it, then we don't feel like we have prayed. And it shouldn't be so. We pray more about our needs, both temporary and spiritual, than we do about God's will. Therefore, our time with God, it is good that we expand our horizons beyond ourselves and beyond our families and consider the work of God worldwide. You may ask, how do we pray for the will of God and for his name to be hallowed, for his kingdom to come and for his will to be done here on earth? You may be asking yourself that question. 
These are matters that can only be explained spiritually or spiritually discerned. They may have a quick explanation or they may have a deeper explanation or they may have a, a revelation explanation to all this. The way God's name will be hallowed means a lot to God. How we desire God's name to be hallowed here on earth, in our community, within our church, within our people. His kingdom come, at least in this age. It's good to find out what is the kingdom of God, what is the will for the kingdom of God, how should his kingdom come down, and what is the kingdom of God. His will be done. Though through the, the proclamation of the gospel, so that many may believe in his son, Jesus Christ, is the best way for the will of God to be done. And obey him as their Lord. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses unto both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Does our prayer reflect this? If be so, then we should show it. How are we praying concerning Acts chapter 1 verse 8? You shall be witnesses. How are we praying about us being witnesses? From beginning from Jerusalem. Our prayer should reflect this also. The second part of the Lord's prayer includes both our daily needs, which includes daily bread, which stands for all our physical needs and material needs and spiritual needs. We all, know, or have, we all know the answer the Lord told Satan when Satan came to tempt him over this physical bread. As earlier stated, our majority focus is on temporary needs, which is not wrong, because Jesus himself instructed us to depend on God for our needs. Because when we do this, we are acknowledging to God that all we have in this life is given by him and belongs to him and not from any man. And I show to him that we depend on him. But first things first. We have also to pray for our spiritual needs which most of us don't because we are overwhelmed by physical needs. As it is here that we see our prayers as instruments of grace that God has provided for our spiritual transformation. We know that we are both responsible and dependent and that prayer is, among other things, an expression of our dependence, an acknowledgement that we are hopeless in within ourselves and that we are dependent on the Holy Spirit to both do his will, his own work, and to enable us to do the work that we must do. As we bring our minds under the influence of the scripture in prayer, because that's the only area that we can pray the right way with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to us areas of our lives that need to be transformed. Sometimes it may be a sinful attitude that needs to be put to death. I'm talking about our spiritual needs. At times, He will make us aware of character traits that Paul called the fruit of the Holy Spirit, as we can see it in Galatians chapter 5, from verse 22 to 23. But the fruit of 
of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Again, as such, there is no law. In which area we need to grow? Character traits are all the aspects of a person's behavior and attitudes that make up the person's personality. Everyone has character traits, both good and bad. They can be shown with descriptive adjectives like patience, unfaithfulness, jealousy, and can be triggered. Such traits can be triggered and noticed if not worked on. E.g., self-control is very important, curiosity, social intelligence. Some can be honesty, brave, compassion, courageous, loyal, and selfish. I said they are both good and bad. As we become more aware of these areas, we need to pray specifically for those areas that the Holy Spirit have enabled us to discover. I'm talking about our spiritual needs. For the work of the Holy Spirit for both change us and enable us to change. Colossians 3, verse 9 to 10. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his, his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Paul was writing this message to believers, to correct inner traits that can pop out to make you know that vice is still in us. And that's why during prayer, the Holy Spirit can search deep inside us if we concentrate on our spiritual needs and reveal to us those characteristics, characters and traits that are still not reflecting the will of God in our lives. Such like that has been laid out openly in Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, that are still found in believers. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24, that you may put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitfulness of lusts. This is a good way of helping us as the Spirit of the Lord helps us in our prayer. It also pops out those inner weaknesses and we are able to repent them out. We are able to renounce them out and we are able to put them off and to continually put on the new man until they are completely eradicated from our spiritual lives. Amen. We should, it is good to keep a list of this private list of sins and patterns that you need to put to death. And those positive traits that you feel you should grow in. If you discover them, viewer, you can shortlist them. And during prayer, you ask the Holy Spirit to deal with them and put them off and put on, on those traits that you feel the Holy Spirit is leading you that are lacking inside you. Pray that the Holy Spirit give us the sense of love and devotion like that sinful woman that prayed certain prayers, I mean that broke an anointing oil in the feet of Jesus Christ. A spiritual devotion of love. We can pray. I'm giving us prayer points for our spirituality. That the Holy Spirit will enable us to bring into mind areas of our lives that need to be changed. And then that we will work in both to will and to deed that can cause us to be transformed. Pray that you would be a doer, but only not 
a listener of the word of God. Pray that the spirit of patience, you will be patient with yourself for your spiritual growth does not come overnight, but with time. Pray that at the quiet time with God, we'll also stand with other families, other friends, spouses, and praying for the well-being of their spiritual transformation. These are spiritual prayers that their children would be taught by the Lord as stipulated in the book of Isaiah 54, verse 13, that God would work in them that which is pleasing as stipulated in Hebrews 13, verse 21. We'll pray about the temporary needs like jobs and business. Those are temporary needs. These are now praying for our needs. Pray that our grandchildren will serve the Lord, naming them. Those are spiritual needs. Pray that prayer groups would be formed and a certain prayer item would be subdivided to days and to be committed as an item each day as we can't pray for all the needs at once. Now, memorization, meditation, and hearing. In our previous session, we, we saw how time alone with God is foundational spiritual discipline. There are others that we should also practice. Scripture memorization is probably the most important of these daily disciplines, and indeed, it is instrumental in helping us in our prayer. The Holy Spirit uses memorization of the word, the word that is hidden in our heart, to warn us about temptations or even to admonish us, to exhort us even to speak to our hearts the answer during our prayers. It can also guide us in the decision that we are about to make when we have a memorized scripture. In times of stress, anxiety, and also help with the countless losses we sometimes go through. This discipline must surely be what the psalmist had in mind when he wrote Psalms 119, verse 11. The word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. I'm still in prayer. When the word of God is hidden in our hearts, it will easily guide us how to pray concerning that word and in the other areas. It, it, the purpose of stirring up this word in our heart, it is meant to help us in our future needs in prayer. Now, as for a scripture memorization, as far as it is concerned, it is notable that storing up a scripture in our life is able to help us to overcome even temptations as Jesus did during his time of temptation. And memorizing the word of God, like I said, is able to strengthen us even during our times of weakness to be able to pray in a stronger way. Because when we memorize and store it in our hearts, we develop an attitude of praying the word of God throughout our prayer. Praise be the name of the Lord. And also a balanced take of the word of God helps us even after we have prayed enough, then we are able to be able to be cleared in our conscious to clearly listen to the word of God. After much prayer for our spiritual needs, they open doors for our physical needs to be answered or for us to be able to see the things we have been praying for that have been already answered. Or we can realize through sensitivity and discernment because we have prayed so much for our spiritual needs, the physical things that have already been answered. I just want to thank God for the moment. I want to pray with us that the Lord will enable us to key in in that area of prayer as it is an instrument 
of grace. Father, I want to thank you for the listener and for the word that I've spoken concerning your word that you taught us in the area of prayer, that when you pray, pray in this manner. Lord, the enemy has challenged and is a hindrance to most of us in the area of prayer, that we may not pray as we ought. And in this hearing, I pray in the name of Jesus that we'll be able to help all the hearers and the listeners to be able to be quickened in the areas of prayer and in the direction of prayer and having priorities in prayer as it were according to your will when you taught us how to pray in Matthew chapter 6. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.